Welcome back. Now, last time we looked at a particular type of clue. We looked at this, mythology from Gabon or Senegal. And I was talking about how you always look for the definition and the wordplay, the word that's going to mean the thing and the rest of it that contributes to the meaning of that word, which is largely how they work. But what I want to look at today is what I call the bread and butter of cryptic crossword clues, the very, very basic way in which the largest family of clues tends to work. So let's have an example. Right, friend with cover for pasty. Six letters long. Now, this is a really basic crossword clue of the most fundamental type. So, still start from the same position, you look for your definition and you look for your wordplay. Definition here, remember one end or the other, it's either friend, because I can't really think of a synonym for friend with cover. Cover for pasty is conceivable, pasty is conceivable, but you're looking once again for this word. Again, just because this is an example, there's a very nice indicator that friend with cover for pasty, i.e. meaning those two things, either side of that word, will be equivalent, so friend with cover will equal pasty. That's our equal sign again in this case. Now, the important thing is, I'm doing that because I've got rid of the word for, so each word needs to somehow contribute to the clue. So when you know you've got rid of one and you're sure that that's what it's doing there, I tend to bracket them out um, so that I know that I don't need to think about what that's doing anymore. Now, the most important thing is, again, abandon the context. This word, you're thinking of it as a noun because you read cover for pasty, so you're thinking of a cover for a thing, and there's a, and there's a thing there. So you're already thinking pasty, but of course, on its own, which you have to think of it on its own, it could now be pasty as well. So not just pasty the thing, but pasty the adjective. So you're looking for a six-letter word, and this is somehow contributing to finding that six-letter word. Now, the absolutely bread-and-butter classic crossword clues work with a form of substitution. So synonyms for these words will make up that one. So it's essentially like unknowns in algebra, you know, x equals blah. So these are your x's. So you think of every synonym you possibly can for friend, every synonym you possibly can for cover, and try and form from those two things a word that means pasty or pasty. Now this word is only six letters long, so they have to be short. You, you, you can't, there's no indication of anything being cut out of this, there's no way to shorten them. You have to think of two very short synonyms and create that word from them. So you've got mate, maybe chum, pal, um, God, there's probably hundreds of slang words for the word friend. Cover. Um, once again, out of context, this is no longer just a noun, it could be the verb to cover, it could be um, a duvet, it could be uh, a lid, which funnily enough, we're going to use. So then, you're looking for a six letter word, it means either pasty or pasty, there aren't really that many synonyms for pasty, so you're probably thinking pasty, pal, lid. gives you the six letter word, pallid, meaning pasty or pale. So that in its simplest form is, that's the, like, like I say, the largest family of clues, where as long as you can get the definition, you just need to think of other words for the bits of the word play and join them together to make a word for that. The with in this context is simply saying that goes with that. The word for friend goes with the word for cover. Later on, these will start to do more interesting things, change the order of the words, change how they're put together, take bits out of them. But at the moment, that's only there because friend cover pasty doesn't really make any sense. And in some way they are supposed to read like sentences, even though they don't make any sense as sentences, what well, that one happens to. So that with is just saying a word for this and a word for this makes up a word for that. And that is a really good sort of grounding in the basic principle. Uh, if you want to practice at any point, I recommend the Observer uh, Everyman crossword, which is a really good basic cryptic. 
I think there's a really fiendish one in there as well, but if you look for the Everyman, that's what it's actually called, uh, you'll find some really good, simple, sort of basic clues in there. It's really good fun. And uh, yeah, happy solving.